welcome back to Lex Reads. In today's video, we are doing my October wrap up. I do music, books, and movies that I watch the entire month. So yeah, let's just get started. I read six books this month, so that is a lot for me. So the first book I read was Jubilee by Margaret Walker. I actually did a reading vlog on this, and this was just amazing. This was on my TBR for this year, and I am like kind of kicking myself that I waited so long to read this. I am a fan of slave narratives. Um, I know sometimes it can be hard for people to read them, but for me, I know since I've read a lot of them and also watch a lot of the movies, I kind of know how to navigate it, you know? One reason why I love this, I would say was the dialogue. Some of the passages, it was like real kind of like modern, but you still got like, you know, but you still got the gist of a slave narrative. But some of the stuff Vari did, it was like, first of all, girl, you're enslaved. So that part when she went to her master asking for permission to marry, I'm like, he not, girl, no, he not go give you permission and he did it. Next, I read a mystery book and this was a first for me because I have never read a mystery book ever. The series that I read actually is the Harlem Renaissance series um, by Nakisha Afi. This is the first book, Dead Dead Girls. I remember I got this like when it came out to say 2021 and i got it because clearly it's harlem renaissance and didn't read it and then you know since october is halloween even though i don't do halloween but for me you know i don't do nothing scary and i was like well a mystery like a murder mystery that's that's scary to me that's halloweenish to me and read it and actually did enjoy it i would say this character louise lloyd some stuff she did was just stupid first of all you you're trying to figure out who are killing these black girls. Any evidence that you get, you think you should give it to the detectives as opposed to just keeping it for yourself? That doesn't make any sense. She would do stupid stuff like that, okay? Um, but there was a lot of layers to Louise Loy. After reading this, I said, well, I wanna read the second book and that was Harlem Sunset. And basically the gist of this, you know, series, you have a young girl named Louise Loy. She's um, in her 20s, mid 20s. She is a lesbian. She uh, when she was 16 years old she was kidnapped she actually escaped and helped like three other girls that were going to be you know kidnapped and killed and she was known as like the Harlem hero where a couple years you know go by a decade goes by and she works at a cafe and the only thing she liked to do was just you know go out drink party go to the speakeasies but these black girls they become but all of a sudden these black girls they get kidnapped and then murdered and they are placed in the front of her cafe she gets in trouble with the you know policemen and they're like well we won't charge you um but you have to do something for us and that is you have to help us you know find out who are killing and kidnapping these black girls and that's what she does i do know that the third book is coming out in july next is the china berry tree by jesse redmond fawcett this actually was my first whole fiction novel um from the harlem renaissance that i read this year i've been reading a lot of like critical analysis some articles looking up things um short stories so you have a young girl named Laurentine. Laurentine is biracial. She is a product of an affair. Her father is white, her uh, mother is black. And because of that, she's ostracized by the community. Um, and I love the play on her last name. Her last name is Strange. And like I said, you know, no one, they don't deal with them. They like, um, strange women, they, they a mess, you know. And she is, such and she's such a lonely person and always has her guard up but that's because you know she's been talked about her whole entire life and she's like i can't help it that i'm the product of that but in comes her young cousin um melissa melissa is a senior in high school she comes to live with them um her senior year and melissa she's grown up poor so her thing is like I want to, you know, meet somebody that has some standards, that has some wealth. And yeah, you see the difference between them. So, so, so good. What happened between Melissa's mother, I was outdone, okay? Um, this book is, it's, it's fantastic. I've told you guys so many times where Harlem Renaissance books, they read so modern where you forget that this was published in like the 1920s, 1930s. And this was the case for this book. You get, one thing I love about Jesse Redman Fawcett 
she gives you closure but also she gives you like a fairy tale ending where it is realistic but it's still like so romantic and after you read it you're like oh that's how she makes you feel but she does you know throw in some realistic aspects and I, I mean I just love her writing she is amazing if we didn't have Jesse Redmond Fawcett we would not have Langston Hughes we would not have uh Claude McKay we wouldn't have Nella Larson she discovered a lot of those authors from the Harlem Renaissance and published their works when no one gave them a chance so we owe a lot to her Next was The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. This was our book club pick for October for Unsung Black Book Club. I read his memoir, uh, The Color of Water, years ago, and it's fantastic. So this is the first time I read a fictional, you know, book by him. With this story, you're dealing with Jews and Blacks, and you see how they... Um, come together, work together, live together. The last book I read is by one of my favorite authors of all times, one of my favorite books of all times, and it is Pray Song for the Butterflies. I did a read a book in one day and just <sighs> love it. Love it, love it, love it. If you haven't read a Bernice L. McFadden book, you need to read a Bernice L. McFadden book, okay? Like, just read all of them because they're so good. They're so different this story amazing i didn't know anything about you know the jacuzzi system which is ritual servitude it's slavery you pick a family member that um, pays for your sins and it can be adultery fornication theft lying and they basically like i said they pay for your sins it's modern day slavery and you live there until you die some girls have been um fortunate to escape or be rescued but yeah when i say it's like american slavery it's it's exactly like that and it still goes on to this day it's supposed to be abolished but it still goes on to this day so yeah if you guys haven't read this i would highly recommend you read it also to um watch my read a book in one day i don't give any spoilers but i do read some passages so you guys can get a gist of the story a gist of you know this author's works and just amazing now for the movies i watched one two three movies and watched two series okay so the first movie i watched was the perfect fine now I need to get that book by Tia. Is it Tia Williams? That movie came out on Netflix in the summer. And of course, I waited until, you know, <laughs> um, the fall. I actually wasn't going to watch it, but y'all know, but you guys know I was sick in October. So if I wasn't reading, any, uh, so like the beginning of the month, I didn't feel like reading because I just couldn't concentrate. So I was on the couch and I'm like, let me just watch this. And I actually really did enjoy it. I like Gabrielle Union, even though she kind of acts the same in all her movies, but I like Gabrielle Union. I'm a fan of Gabrielle Union. Um, so yeah, and I like Gina Torres. And that, first of all, the outfits in that movie was fantastic. Oh my goodness. Then the next movie I watched, <laughs> I watched Matilda. <laughs> I was on the Netflix kick this month. Um, uh, so I watched Matilda. Um, I mean, first of all, I love that movie. Know it backwards and forwards. I mean, come on now. And Miss Trunchbull and Miss Honey and Matilda and them parents and parents need to be beat. Okay, but yeah, love that movie. Next, I watched Stanley and Iris. That movie is with Jane Fonda and Robert De Niro. Oh, so good. It's about... Uh, a young woman, uh, well, a young mother, she is a widow. Her husband just died a couple months ago. She has a teenage daughter and a young son. And, you know, she's just trying to get acclimated with, you know, being now a single mother, you know. And the money tight. Money tight. She work in a factory, small little town. And then in comes Stanley. Stanley is, he works in a factory too. He is a chef. And, you know, they get, they start talking and things like that. But the thing with Stanley is Stanley can't read. He can't read at all. He can't even write his name. And it's not a spoiler, but it's the scene where she has this headache. And, you know, they're like, hey, Stan, you know, get her some medicine. And he's getting the medicine. She's like, oh, this is for heartburn. He gives her another medicine. She's like, this is for something else. He realizes, oh, look like he can't read. And then a couple of weeks later, there is some mismanagement with some um, packaging or whatever. You know, they work in the kitchen, so they're trying to get uh, things like stocked. 
and food and things like that and uh his boss like are you stealing from me like you know this these products not matching with these prices and she tells him he's not robbing you he can't read what happened to my mayonnaise what happened to my 150 pounds of coffee what happened to my tuna fish come on who's getting fat off of me it isn't stanley cox who are you what do you know you know something i don't know he can't read and he can't write so it isn't him so yeah and he you see how it goes it was really really good it fascinates me how some people in this world they really cannot read or write can you imagine living in a world that you cannot read or write man that just is deep so yeah really good movie and then next i watched um insecure the fifth season i'm not done with it yet i watched about three four episodes i'm so late to this y'all <sighs> that came out in what 2021 and i'm just now finishing it which now that i'm watching i'm like girl why you wait so long but i have to be in the mood to watch certain things and i was not in the mood you know to watch insecure um but so glad i um you know i've picked it up again like i said i think i got like four more episodes i already know what's gonna happen you know towards the end but i just want to see you know i know obviously it's some you know bits and pieces that i don't know but yeah i know what's gonna happen towards the uh, end so yeah but i really uh but i really like that show such a good show love Issa Rae, fantastic and then lastly, I watched The Gilded Age. Y'all know that's been my show. Um, finally, they came out with the second season. So it premiered, um, what, the end of October. Uh, it sucks because you have to, first of all, you got to wait week by week. I wish they were like Netflix where, you know, season premieres, you got the whole season, but you got to wait. So I'm like, I got to wait every Sunday at nine to watch it. Um, but it's worth the watch. We got a lot from that um, second season, first episode, okay? My heart goes out to Peggy. I was so sad with Peggy. Um, oh, my goodness. But, yeah, we got we got a lot in that first episode. I was happy about that. So, can't wait until the next episode comes. Um, and I've told you guys so much how I love that show because they highlight the black elite. And, oh, I love it. I love it so much. Such good writing. All I watch for the month of October. And lastly, for music, I went back to listening to a whole body of work. And that body of work is by Tina Marie. This is Irons in the Fire. Love it. Y'all know I'm still on this vinyl kit. Go be on it for a while. Every month, it looks like I get a vinyl. And this was the vinyl I got in the month of October. Only paid $5 for it. Fantastic. I love, obviously, um, I Need Your Lovin'. Um, I love Irons in the Fire. And this was written and produced by Tina Marie. I didn't know Tina Marie produced her music. Just fantastic. I love this cover, though. Always, when I was younger, I thought Tina Marie was one of us. I didn't know that she was a white lady. <laughs> I thought she was one of us, okay? Because you know, she sings like a black woman. You just, just saying. So obsessed with vinyl records. It's another thing that I'm collecting. And like I said, every month, it looked like I get a vinyl album and I'm just going to continue to get it. Hopefully I'm going to continue this race of, you know, reading um, a good amount of books in the month. Um, you know, if I don't, I don't. If I do, I do. So that's how I feel. But yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. And I'll be back with more about books. Bye.